you said you laid out some very aggressive targets. I didn't know you could hit them because I was concerned that the PC market may be in decline. You blew them away. How were you able to do that and also have that cash generation that would allow you to have such a big buyback? Well, first, let me thank you for the opportunity of being here. For the last four months, I have been really looking for this opportunity, Excellent. so I'm thank extremely you. thankful. Thankful. And as you, as you said, we had a very strong Q1. It shows that the company is strong and is getting stronger. We executed extremely well. We grew EPS by more than 25%. We grew operating profit by 15%. We executed on strategy in the printer space, but we really did incredibly, incredibly well in the personal system space. We have an execution machine. We grew revenue. We really grow our share in the premium categories. We really had a very strong quarter. Okay, now you're talking a $16 billion capital return plan. You're talking advancing $15 billion in total share of repurchase, including $8 billion accelerated. That's almost half the company. How can you afford to do that? We have a very strong balance sheet, and what we have decided is that we want to use our balance sheet in the benefit of HP's shareholders. We are going to change our debt ratio to make sure that we can increase debt and return and buy back $8 billion of stock in the next 12 months. And by changing also the increasing the amount of capital we will return every quarter, we will be delivering the $16 billion that we said. You're talking about a much lo- a higher earnings number, 325 to 365 and fiscal 2022. That does value your company as one of the most inexpensive in the S&P 500. Why do you think it trades at such a discount? Well, our focus is really, Jim, in creating value. This increase is driven by operational improvements, where we are going to increase operating profit in the next three years by more than $600 million. And also, the aggressive use of our capital is going to help to increase EPS during that period. So this is really going to be what will be helping us to drive this. Chip Berg, friend of the show, head of Levi's, chairman of your board, has told me over and over again, you will do what's right in order to create the best value for shareholders, which includes, in this particular case, not succumbing, basically, to uh, a odd bid from Xerox. Why does your board feel that you should get that chance to continue to operate this company by itself? Well, we, we think that the offer from Xerox clearly doesn't benefit HP shareholders. The, ex- the value exchange they are proposing doesn't make sense. They are valuing themselves at nine. We are value- being valued at seven. The capital structure they are proposing creates significant risk. Right. They are proposing a, a, a debt to EBITDA ratio above 4%, which will be the highest in the S&P. And on top of well, that... I see S&P. Well, isn't that terrific? And especially in situations where economy could go down. We were talking before about coronavirus. Imagine what will be the impact on that in a situation where your debt is beyond what it should be, what the businesses will be able to support. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that. I mean, frankly, when I think about the pandemic, when I think about my job, I don't want to be the person who said... You know what? That takeover made a lot of sense at the absolute top, which is entirely what could happen. The goal that these people are showing makes me feel that they're somewhat desperate. I don't know whether you agree with me, but this is the kind of thing that you'll look back and say, I cannot believe some company was that darn foolhardy to take down all that debt to do this. Am I too extreme? We are competing in some parts of the market in a relatively small part of our right. company. How we much, are growing. How much is there? If you it's solve. less than 10 percent, the part where we overlap. We have grown 60 percent in the last three years. They have declined double digit. This shows you the momentum we have and why we are winning in the market. So then why do you think, I mean, look, they've got a board, that they've got some people that they want to put on. Uh, they do have support. There's some big institutions that are saying this makes a ton of sense. How do you win them over if they're just trying to make a quick buck? Well, actually, what we are saying is that there is value in consolidation. We think that the synergies will create value for our shareholders, but this needs to be done in the right way. We think their proposal doesn't make sense, but in addition to, execute our, to executing our plan, we think this is something that we're open to consider, as we have explained. Okay, I think that's important because there was a time uh, when your company was interested in combining with them and it didn't work. Uh, their company, I think, has essentially gotten worse, although the stock went up because people expect you to buy them. Uh, is, is there as much value there as when uh, HP looked at it a few years ago? 
Well, I, what we think is there is value in consolidation in the market okay. because there are synergies to be, uh, to be achieved. Those synergies will create value. We have some questions about the performance of the company that we need to validate before we go and we right. make a, a potential offer. Is this the time to lever up big, knowing that uh, whatever could happen in Europe, where you have a lot of uh, business, even the United States with the coronavirus, to me it seems, I would say, uh, ill-advised. At this point, clearly, we think that the debt rate they are proposing is beyond what a company in the situation where we are, and also given the businesses that we manage, will be able to support. Right. We have a negative cash conversion cycle. Imagine what will be the impact on that debt in a situation where demand may slow down by, for, right. because well, of something well, like coronavirus. Right. Before I came Jimmy Chill, I would say it's one of the more stupid things I've heard. It's the kind of thing that is very embarrassing that some clown banks would check off on it, but I've become more of a diplomat. Let me ask you a question. You are a man of the world. How are we doing in this coronavirus worldwide? Are you concerned? Actually, we, the way we look at this is we think the coronavirus is going to have temporary impact. The biggest Even for impact, your business, where we all use these. Well, the major impact on our side is in the manufacturing side. Right. We produce most of our products in China. We have been, after Chinese New Year, production has slowed down. We are seeing a recovery. And the way we look into this is a temporary impact during Q2. Okay, so today, how many of, your fa how many of the factories that supplied to this were open? As uh, so of today, majority of the factories Majority. are open, but the production is not at 100 percent level. So you are not being able to meet demand, because I know your demand is incredibly strong this quarter. So from a demand perspective, we don't see any impact. It's all a supply chain driven impact. That's for the work. We calculated and we have estimated that in Q2, this will have an eight cents impact in EPS, and this is what we have built in our Excellent. And here's what I want to do. I think very fine people at Xerox who want to leave her up. It could be the top. I always am welcome to hear something like that, because I am a person of open-mindedness. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.